hey guys what's up welcome back to the channel it's Nick Alex and today we're going to talk all about null world boss legend I know a ton of you guys have been asking in the comments for a guide video for best teams for a ranking so I decided to go with the maximum amount of information first so that's a why this video is a little bit later today apologies for that but this is my first so this is version 1.0 of my null world boss legend difficulty guide so this aims to not only rank all of the tier threes and awakening characters in terms of how good or bad they are against Null, but then to also give you an idea of how good they are in relation to one another and also give you an idea of what kind of obelisks or CTPs you can equip on them. Now, this is not an ex this is not a completely exhaustive list. Elsa, Silk are missing because they're really bad awakening characters because they never got uniforms. So that is one thing to note. I may also be missing maybe one other character on here. I can't remember, but I'm, I'm, I'm almost sure we have them all besides Elsa and Silk. Um, and I also don't discuss, at least visually, any CTPs besides an Obelisk, an Energy, or a Rage. Now, given that this is high-level endgame PvE content, any kind of PvP Obelisk is just not going to be an option. I mean, there may be a possibility. There may be an account out there somewhere which is so stacked that they could take, you know, a Sentry or um, an Odin and maybe clear stage one, but that's not really what I'm going for here. So I'm trying to assume, you know, the average player's perspective. So that's why I'm only talking about Obelisk, Energy, and Rage, which are the three best PvE Obelisks or PvE custom gears. There is also a CTP of Judgment, which is sort of in between an Obelisk and an Energy and maybe easier to play certain characters like Professor X or Luna Snow or Apocalypse or Dormammu. But again, I just didn't want to put too many graphics in there. The way that you can read the obelisks and CTPs is if the character has a, a, an obelisk, like Sentry, Star-Lord, for example, that means that I have confirmed either by playing myself or watching a video of someone else playing that that character can clear doing the majority of the damage, at least on stage one, with an obelisk, okay? Then if there's a CTP of energy, it means they can do it with a CTP of energy or a rage. And then if there is a CTP of rage, then I've only confirmed seeing it with a CTP of rage. So obelisk means you can go up from obelisk to energy or to rage. So for example, my Star Lord can clear stage three or four of null with a rage, but I know he can also clear stage one with an obelisk. So this will give you a better understanding and a better idea of which characters can necessarily do it with an obelisk and which characters are probably going to need to rely on a rage in the first place. So I'm really, really happy with how this list turned out. Also, I forgot to say this at the beginning, but two things here. One, these are just my opinions. You're more than welcome to feel differently about them. This is just how I have seen Null thus far and the information that I've gathered. I might be wrong. Um, I actually might swap Moonstone and um, Moon Knight. I'm not sure yet, but yeah. Uh, and this list is subject to change in the future. I'll leave a link down below to an imager of this image if you want to go ahead and save it or bookmark the, the page. I'll have also a link on it on the Discord server permanently. And then another thing is I want to big, give a huge shout out to Eternal Flame 555. Apologies for not shouting you out at the beginning of the video, but Eternal Flame 555 made this beautiful um, graphic, infographic for tier 3 character proc friendliness. And if you can tell uh, by mine, I got a lot of inspiration from their list. So that is where I sort of got the idea for this design. Um, I just added a little bit to it with the little CTPs in the corner rather than having the CTPs top to bottom. The top to bottom is the ranking of how good they are um, in, in the sense of the top characters would make Null cry. So that's why I, I did a little cheesy graphic where Null's crying. And then the characters at the bottom will make Null laugh and smile because they're just going to have a really bad time and they're not going to be able to do enough damage against Null. So that's basically how the um, list functions and, and what it looks like and how it, it sort of shakes out. So I'll give you guys a little bit of information, a little bit of further information on how I ranked these characters. And I'll talk about a couple of characters in particular that you might not have expected to be as good as they are. So not only are the characters ranked in terms of how much standalone damage they can do, that is definitely the first and most important ranking is I'm, I'm not ranking the characters based on cost or how difficult they are to obtain, but I am first of all, ranking them on how much damage they do. So I've observed people being able to clear stage nine, stage 10 of Null with Sharon Rogers, um, you know, Odin, stuff like that. So that's why those characters are at the top. And I also use those characters. I use Sharon Rogers on stage six. I use Ghost Rider on stage five. I use uh, Odin on stage four, but I have like two minutes left. So 
that's really the, the speed and the, the amount of damage that they do is definitely the, the highest priority for Null because he's such a difficult boss. So you need to be able to pump out enough damage to kill him. Secondly, you want to consider how difficult or easy the character is to play. Odin is so easy to play against Null. He has tankiness. He's got iframes. He can move around with his second skill where he's spinning the spear behind him. He has a heal. He has a cancelable tier three. He doesn't really get interrupted much against Null. So he's really, really good. As good as Sharon Rogers' damage is, which might actually be better than Odin's, she definitely slides down because Sharon Rogers is a lot more difficult to play against Null than Odin. She has a heal. She has insane raw damage. Unfortunately, she gets interrupted. So if you're getting interrupted with Sharon Rogers, if you're getting interrupted with her tier three, don't feel bad. It's happening to a lot of players. It's happening to me. So the difficulty of the player, of the character to play is definitely a concern um, second to the damage that they do. The damage they do is obviously first, but if a character does a lot of damage, but you, you have to play perfectly and you can never get, you know, hit or whatever, then it's going to drag down their value, right? Because then if you don't have a perfect run, then their damage suffers and then they don't have that damage anymore. The third thing I considered was leaderships and passives. So passives would be like support passives, like Mystique's support passive, which is obviously the best one on this list. Or let's say you have, um, you have Medusa's passive for Inhumans. You have um, Storm's passive for elemental damage. You have Cyclops' passive for energy attack. So those passives I considered as well. I bumped up those characters a little bit just because of that passive. So is Storm necessarily better than some of those other characters just below her or even, you know, Silver Surfer? Maybe not. I honestly think that Cho is better than, quite a bit better than Storm for Null, but she does have a 25%, 25 or 35% increased elemental damage. Now, all of these characters are featured with their latest uniforms. I'm assuming they're using their latest uniforms. If you're not using their latest uniforms, you may not get the same production. For some of these characters, they don't even have a, an other uniform. Like, it was Dormammu's first uniform. That's Apocalypse's first uniform. That's Odin's first uniform. You can assume that without those uniforms, the characters are going to drop dramatically. They may not even exist on this list. So, I know it might, it might suck to know that. But yeah, I don't think Ghost Rider can do anything at all against Null unless he has the newest uniform. There are some exceptions, like Sharon Rogers can probably still clear stage one with her old uniform, with her Dark Star uniform. Um, but yeah, it's a very, very short list. I didn't want to clog this up. It's already a lot of information. I didn't want to clog it up with alternate uniforms. I know there are two uniforms for Black Widow. I chose the white one because it's just easier to see and it's easier to visualize. When she has the white uniform because of the icon, she's got the braided hair, you know that's Black Widow. With the black uniform, the icon just looks like a generic character. You can get confused between her or someone else. So I decided to go with that one there. Uh, and that's basically how it shakes out. There obviously are playstyle differences and there are certain benefits to picking certain characters. But um, ultimately, it's going to matter who you have on your roster and then who you can develop further. So what I would do is I would definitely try to identify characters in the first two or three lines at the top that you don't have and then budget based on where you can sort of, you know, how soon you can build them up, whether they're an awakening character or a tier three character. And then also consider if you have their uniform or not. That's another pretty important factor to take into consideration. And then of course, uh, the, the obelisk or CTP that you can actually give them. So one good example of a, of a nice combo that you might want to consider is Star-Lord and Beta Ray Bill, because by completing the Star-Lord portion of the epic quest, you're also going to get Beta Ray Bill, and then you can start working towards getting him transcended. The character needs to be transcended before he can go up against Null, so that's sort of a two-for-one situation, and as you can see, neither of them need a rage to do Null. Obviously, if your raid level, if your cards are worse or worse or worse, like, you know, more lower damage, lower numbers, then that's going to affect your builds. So if you have, you know, zero, zero attack on cards and your raid level is 10, Star-Lord probably can't do it with an obelisk. Again, I'm assuming sort of like an average player. I'm not talking about none of these examples that I've given you that I've put for CTPs. None of these have, you know, reforged CTPs. None of them have crafted cards with with Pierce. Um, despite what some people might tell you, you do not need crafted cards. You do not need reforged CTPs in order to beat Null. I am doing stage four and five and six of Null with my cards. My cards are great. Don't get me wrong. My cards are great, but they are not crafted. So you can get stats comparable to mine with less RNG by crafting. On top of that, 
I'm doing, like I said, I'm doing stage four, five, six. So you can scale that down. There's actually a big difference. Doesn't seem like there is, but there's a big difference for null between stage one and stage five. If I do stage five with Sharon Rogers, I have maybe like a minute left. I could probably, if sorry, yeah, stage five with Sharon Rogers, I'd have like a minute left. If I do stage one, I might be able to finish it in a minute. There's a, there's a humongous, there's a humongous scaling um, in null. And so there are definitely characters on this list. Like for example, Venom, he's really good against null. He can do stage four. I think that's his limit for me. I don't think he can do stage five. It's, it's really that big of a jump where with, with, uh, with Venom against stage four, I'm doing it with like a minute left. Once I go up to stage five, he can't even do it. So it's something that you have to sort of adjust to. It's very, very different than the other world bosses where, you know, you're looking at your clear on Ebony and you're like, okay, I can clear stage 50. So I can probably go up to stage 55, even though I have, even though I only have a minute left on 50, I could probably squeak out a 55 clear with 10 seconds left. That's not how it works against null at all. A minute is probably a stage. So if it takes you four minutes to clear stage one, you're probably not ready to clear stage two, but that's good because it means that if I'm able to clear these higher stages, you can go to a lower stage and still have success. Again, there's not, there doesn't seem to be much of a difference the really good news is there doesn't seem to be much of a difference in the CCF drops, whether you're doing stage one or stage five, I've gotten 30, 40 CCF on stage three or four. And I've gotten 15 CCF on stage five or six. And I've seen people send me screenshots, stage one, 50 CCF. Stage one, 35, 40 CCF. So the 50 CCF was two CCF drops because he can have two CCF drops. He can actually have three CCF drops. But yeah, because you have the guaranteed one, the random one. And then I think the boss of the day one as well. I might be wrong about that. But yeah, he dropped, he can drop a lot of CCF basically. So yeah, hopefully this list helps you guys out. If you have uh, opinions and if you want to um, maybe give me some evidence that certain characters should be moved up or down, I welcome it. I don't have much experience at all with the characters in the bottom four rows that's the thor thor Ares, wolverine black panther row um so you know if you have information about that i've seen people clear like stage one with bullseye i've talked to some people who cleared stage one with uh gwenum and uh, red guardian and maybe thanos again they're taking the full five minutes they have a really really good build on those characters so that's why they're sort of down there versus the ones at the top that can definitely push way past stage one and can do a boatload of damage or can do it with an underdeveloped build without a CTP of rage, without, you know, crazy stats, etc. So yeah, hit me up in the comments down below. I'll leave a link down below in the description to this uh, list, to this tier list. And then I will also post it on Discord so you guys can uh, have access to that whenever you want. Hit me up in the comments down below. Let me know what you think. I'll be bringing you a lot more null content, but I just wanted to get this out of the way first so that you can roadmap and decide, okay, you know what? My next tier three, I'm going to try to get venom and then i'm gonna transcend moonstone or i'm you know i'm almost done mystique so we're gonna finish mystique and then i'm gonna get professor x so i can combo them together and use her support and use their their um you know they have a team up together or you know wow i didn't know carnage was so good i love carnage i bought his uniform but i never tier three him i guess i'm gonna tier three carnage and go smash null in the face okay i'm gonna bring you guys way more content on null i'm also gonna be bringing you guys a guide for how to get to null because i know some of you guys can't play null yet so you're feeling frustrated because you still have to go through the gauntlet of these four bosses there is a, a cheaper efficient way to sort of skip through it without having to grind out all of these characters you can build all of these characters to six stars if you want but if you want to save resources and you have a few thousand crystals to spend in in exchange about two thousand crystals uh you can skip ahead and you know get jump jump ahead to null weeks or months uh faster so yeah i'll be hitting up with that content thank you so much for watching thanks for supporting the channel and i'll see you guys in the next one take care